everybody, this might be a weird way to start a movie review, but there is no justice in the universe and God is dead. Because fucking Grown Ups 2 beat fucking Pacific Rim this weekend. Now, before I get into my huge rant, Pacific Rim is fucking awesome. Go fucking see it. But now I'm in my rant. Fucking really? Really, America? Really? Grown Ups fucking 2? Adam Sandler? When's the last fucking time he was in a universally fucking agreed upon good movie? The Wedding Singer? No, no, fuck it. We gotta go see this instead of an original story about fucking robots. <laughs> Seriously, any fucking asshole who went to see a movie like Godzilla and the Transformer movies or fucking the Dragon Ball Z movie, any of you fucking cocksuckers who, go, who went to see those movies but doesn't go see Pacific Rim, you lose all fucking rights to bitch about bad movies. Never again. You have no fucking rights left when it comes to shit movies. You had your fucking chance to support a good fucking movie. And you didn't take it. I can accept Despicable Me 2 beating fucking Pacific Rim. Because Despicable Me 2, it's got the minions. They're adorable. I want to hug them every time I see one. And Despicable Me was a good movie. And it was an original movie. So this is a sequel to an original concept. So I'm like, okay... I could get behind that one. The fucking Grown Ups 2? It's basically every fucking, hey, we're having a middle-aged fucking crisis because, you know, we're not the young fucking stupid moronic kids we were. A few years ago, some old friends shared an unforgettable weekend. We're stupid moronic adults. Also, when has Kevin James ever been in a good movie? Answer me. Riddle me fucking that one, audience. Name one time Kevin James was in a good movie. You fucking can't. It's just, it's just fucking deplorable. That fucking... And everywhere else, everywhere else, Pacific Rib was number one. Everywhere else. Except for Australia, but Australia is weird. So, on to the movie. Fucking amazing. It is... It is every fucking thing I wanted and more. Like, I'm not joking. This was a better summer movie than Avengers. I know that will shock a lot of you, but here's my reason behind that. Avengers had five movies. They had five movies to build up hype. This had one. This had one movie to build a living, breathing world, and by fucking God did they did. This fucking movie built more of a living, breathing, coherent world than all three of the fucking Transformer movies did. It is seriously fucking pathetic that fucking Transformers made more fucking money than Pacific Rim. I will never not be upset by this, people. Ah, <sighs> fucking, it's just, it's fucking, it's really fucking depressing. Because it's like, you know what? Lone Ranger failing, that's a good thing. If Pacific Rim had fucking succeeded and succeeded big, that would have been the perfect one-two punch to Hollywood. But nope, that chance has fucking gone, and it's not fucking coming back. Good job, everybody. You fucking blew your fucking chance to stick it to fucking Hollywood. I haven't even gotten into fucking describing the movie yet, have I? You know, there's not much to describe. It's fucking giant robots fighting giant fucking monsters. Boom. It's pretty fucking simple. And a lot of fucking people are kind of harping on that. Like, mm, the character, there's no real characters in this movie. They're all archetypes. And that's, that's true. That's probably the biggest flaw of the movie. But here's the fucking thing. They're archetypes done fucking well. You can do archetypes and do them horribly. Look at fucking, look at like 90% of the fucking movies I've reviewed thus far on this channel. You think fucking, you think Superman is a very fucking complex fucking character? Bull fucking shit. Superman is the origin of this superhero archetype. Yet that, that movie made a billion fucking dollars. It's just, it's fucking sickening. So I guess I should talk about the other flaws too, which there's not many of them. Like, that's the biggest one, that the characters could have been fleshed out in actual characters a little more. The other two are kind of very nitpicky. From a technical standpoint, they don't match the lighting when they're in fights and stuff, so it's kind of weird because you'll be like, wait a second. 
This guy fell and his back was facing this red light, but when he's standing up, he's facing the red light and he didn't turn around, so how is that fucking possible? And I wish there was more of a diverse color palette amongst the kaiju in this movie because they're all kind of gray, green, brown, and it's... And I mean, the Jaegers are really fucking colorful. And the whole fucking... Like, the fucking sequence in fucking Hong Kong is, is basically almost like somebody threw fruity pebbles on the fucking screen. It's so colorful. And... It, oh, Fucking, they, they, there's this one cool fucking part where they built this, like, uh, kaiju attacked Hong Kong years ago. And that's the other fucking cool thing. Th this isn't an origin story. It's basically something I would like to see in more fucking movies where they just throw you into the fucking world. There's like a 10 minute thing at the beginning which explains to you what kaiju are, what Jaegers are, and how the world has gotten to the fucking point that it is in in the movie. And basically, kaiju has started appearing more and more frequently, so the world's government, because the world's under one government now in the movie, they decided to stop funding the Jaeger program and instead build what is called the Wall of Humanity, just basically giant walls around all the coastal areas. Spoiler alert, doesn't work out. But another cool thing they do to fucking rebuild, to build out this war, the kaiju are, they're not treated like a terrorist threat, like how a lot of movies do shit now. It, like, even Avengers, as much as I loved it, they still kind of went into the whole 9-11 type imagery of, like, people running in the streets scared, plumes of fucking smoke shit like that. Not in this fucking movie. Kaiju in this movie are treated as natural disasters. And they even have like a kaiju warning system, like the like a hurricane system. So they evacuate the cities before like the kaiju come. They're like category 3 kaiju, category 3 kaiju. Let's go, people. Category 3 kaiju. What else? The monster design is really great. Even if it is a bit Gamera at times. Like, you'll definitely see a lot of fucking Gamera monsters in this movie. Like, especially the ones with, like, blade and axe heads. Those are definitely bla based off of the, the, uh, what was he? What was it? Zyga? I think it was Zyga. It wasn't Gauss. Gauss was the big Rodan bird-looking thing from Gamera. But there's, like, there's some Gauss in here, too. There's a lot of Gamera monsters. Um, the mechs are very fucking widely diverse. You know, I've seen people say everything from, like, they, their Gundams to fucking this to that. And some of them do have, like, uh, Coyote Tango, for example. He is very Gundam looking. But the two biggest influence I see, first and foremost, is G Gundam. Especially in the cockpit scenes, because it, it's basically the same premise as as um, G Gundam, where like the head is the cockpit and like the person's movements control the robots. But unlike G Gundam, they need two people because the robots are too big and too complex for one person to run, and they never fucking drop that premise either. Like in so many fucking movies, the, the last fucking scene would be like, oh no, my partner is knocked out. I'm gonna have to do this by myself. And the only times they do break that premise, they show that there are horrible fucking consequences for one person piloting a Jaeger. Also, there's, a, especially in Gypsy Danger, the main Jaeger, there is a lot of fucking big O. Like, when, I'm not joking, when fucking, when Gypsy Danger did the fucking big O punch to fucking the, the, the one kaiju, I was like, oh my god, it's a big O punch. I, I literally watched most of the movie like this, just like, oh my god, it's beautiful. It really, like this movie, this deserves to be seen on a big fucking screen. Like seriously, go fucking see this movie, people. What do I have to do? Do I have to cut myself do I have to be like, until people go see fucking Pacific Rim, I'm going to fucking cut myself. I'm going to be a cutter until people see this movie. And I keep forgetting about the one thing I want to talk about. In Hong Kong, there's this great scene where fucking uh, Hong Kong was attacked during the beginning of the Kaiju Wars. And one of the Kaiju bodies just fell there and they kind of left it. Since then, an entire little shanty town has built up around the kaiju, and there's and the, the skull of the deceased kaiju is even like is used as a church for crazy kaiju worshippers. 
again, it just goes to show you like how much care was put into this movie that they build this beautiful, glorious fucking world. And they do things with the kaiju concept that I've never really seen before. Like, Ron Perlman's in this movie. That might surprise some people because he hasn't been shown in any of the advertisements. Ron Perlman's in this. He is basically a kaiju black marketeer. He basically goes around and collects bits and pieces of different kaiju and sell them to people who have varied interests. Like, some people want to, like, trophies. Some people want to, like, experiment on them. And that's a huge plot point in the movie. But it's, like, it's really interesting because it's, like, it really shows you how this world and how humans in this world have adapted to this thing. And it really reminds me a lot of like Independence Day, but good. And it definitely reminds me a lot of Godzilla and the Transformer movies, but again, good. It fucking just disappoints me though that again, Grown Ups fucking two. Fucking like that's one of those movies that really should have been like some kind of false front for like a David Cronenberg kind of body organ harvest kind of fucking deal. Like, everybody who goes see Grown Ups 2, like, a strange purple mist should come out of the fucking ceiling and knock everybody out, and then they wake up and they're, like, sewn ass to fucking ass with a monkey. Ugh. So, in final, in my final opinion of Pacific Rim, go fucking see this!